Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, before proceeding with the program, we would like to wish you a very happy new year. And now, let's take a look at the headlines. The 23rd National Children's Science Congress concludes in Mohali. Graphene, the new tool to treat bone injuries. 17th Astronomical Festival receives enthusiastic reception. And in our In Focus segment today, we will try to analyze the scientific challenges that await us in 2016. And now news in detail. Exhibiting uniquely creative ideas and innovative scientific solutions, the 23rd session of the National Children's Science Congress recently concluded in Mohali. The Congress focused on understanding weather and climate change and it saw enthusiastic participation of students and researchers from across the country. Let us have a look at the report. Youngsters are the future of the nation, making it crucial to catch them young. And catching students young is the mission of the nationwide science communication program, National Children's Science Congress. Towards this year's end, the 23rd National Children's Science Congress was recently held at Chandigarh University, Mohali, during 27th to 31st December. The 23rd session of the Congress, organized by the NCSTC network and supported by National Council for Science and Technology Communication, Ministry of Earth Science and Technology, was focused on the theme Understanding Weather and Climate. The event inaugurated on 27th December by Dr. Daljeet Singh Chima. Education Minister Punjab was attended by over 1400 students selected through various district and state level competitions across the country. The event was flagged off with a march passed by the participants who later exhibited their innovative project ideas addressing various aspects of climate change. Our experiment was with tonic water which indicates the efficacy of different cloth materials used in the sun protection. Uh, we want to design a headgear which we are looking forward to and uh, sidewise publicize our idea and uh, make people aware about the misconceptions they are having regarding the sun protection they are used to. We want to help the farmers so we, we have prepared one app uh, which can switch off so many new technologies like uh, what is the weather forecast of today's and tomorrow's and what will be necessary to the farmers and the scientists opinion, soil test and the mixed crop. The app is named as Telangana Agro. The Congress was also an opportunity for young students to interact with renowned researchers across the nation who attended the Congress encouraging students towards scientific pursuits. The closing ceremony of the 23rd National Science Congress was presided over by Punjab's Higher Education Minister, Surjeet Singh Rakhra. Initiated in the year 1993, National Children's Science Congress is a forum for children of the age group of 10 to 17 years, both from formal school system as well as from out of school, to exhibit their creativity and innovativeness. The Congress aims to promote young talents to solve society's problems using science. Way back in 2010, when Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to two scientists for their groundbreaking experiments regarding graphene, which is an allotrope of carbon, it was clear that the material with extraordinary properties will have a wide range of applications. Now, in an exciting new discovery, a team of Indian researchers have figured out how graphene can be used as a support to grow bone tissues. The technology may hold the promise of treating a bone injuries without transplants and implants. Let us see how. Oh. 
treating injuries and ailments using tissue or organ transplants from healthy donors and implants like pacemakers has needless to say revolutionized healthcare. But with high chances of rejection in tissue or organ transplants, the science of tissue engineering that is stimulating the growth of body's own cells to repair the damage is the future. While tissue engineering makes use of various synthetic materials as a 3D scaffold or support to help the cells grow and restore the original tissue, here comes a breakthrough. A group of researchers from the Indian Institute of Science under the leadership of Dr. Kaushik Chatterjee has discovered how 3D scaffolds made of graphene can be used for bone tissue regeneration. The fact that you know over the years in medicine when there is a problem with any tissue or organ of the human body current strategy is to use a medical device which replaces the function of the of that tissue or organ but now what increasingly people are looking into, researchers are interested in, is the idea of tissue engineering where we want to engineer or regenerate a tissue or an organ of the human body. And one of the things that you need for that are these materials on which cells would grow and these would get implanted in the body where you add in the cells, they help in regenerating the tissue or an organ and that will eventually replace the damaged uh, target tissue that we are trying to regenerate. The team investigating the response of cells to various 2D and 3D scaffolds conclude that 3D graphene based polymer nanocomposites are perfect templates for bone tissue generation as they mimic the environment of the bone and supports the attachment and growth of healthy cells along with being non-toxic and non-immunogenic. Researchers also found that adding graphene to polycaprolactone, a conventional bipolymer used in tissue engineering, makes the scaffold stronger and increases its moisture absorbing capacity, makes it ideal to be used for repairing bone damages. And what is more, graphene can be made into two or three dimensional scaffolds with varying and chemical and physical properties based on the requirement using various procedures. In 3D scaffold, what we found that uh, cells showed agglomerated uh, 3D architecture in comparison to uh, cells on 2D scaffolds. And the cells in 3D scaffold showed more osteogenic morphology and also they started secreting more ALP which is an osteogenic marker for indicating osteogenic differentiation of cells. And interestingly, the bone cells respond and grow differently based on the nature of the scaffolds. The study that has been published in the Journal of Biomedical Materials Research B. Applied Biomaterials opens new avenues in the field of tissue engineering. Exploring students' interest in astronomy, the 17th Astronomy Festival was organized in Bhopal recently. The festival comprised an exciting session of sky watching along with seminars on various concepts of astronomy. Let us see more details in this report. As children, one of the aspects of science which almost everyone finds exciting must be astronomy. Encouraging youngsters' interest in astronomy, the 17th Astronomical Science Festival was recently conducted in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. The festival jointly organized by the Madhya Pradesh Vigyan Sabha in collaboration with Vigyan Prasad, Madhya Pradesh Council of Science and Technology and Anchalik Vigyan Kendra Bhopal has been promoting awareness on astronomical science among children for the past 16 years. According to S.R. Azad, Secretary General Vigyan Sabha, the festival aims to promote novel thoughts and young talents in the field of astronomy, along with igniting students' curiosity and interest in the subject. The two-day event which saw the large-scale participation 
comprised sessions on origin of universe, stars and solar system by senior scientist Dr. Arvind Ranade from Vigyan Prasad. Dr. Ranade interacted with the students and conducted sessions explaining the concepts of speed of stars and moon, galaxies, astronomical distances, ancient astronomical beliefs, the phenomenon of full moon and future scopes of astronomy. Dr. M. M. Rawat from Anchalik Vigyan Kendra demonstrated how science can be used to dispel superstitions. The chief guests of the event, Dr. K. S. Tiwari, Regional Director, IGNU, Dr. P. K. Verma, Director, Madhya Pradesh Council of Science and Technology, S. R. Azad, Secretary General Vigyan Sabha, expressed their views and stressed on the need of science in our daily lives and its impact on the society. Dr. Uma Shankar Sharma, Vigyan Prasar, coordinated the event. The festival was also attended by 20 students from Patal Court, District Chindwara. The students for whom this was the first of its kind exposure to science received the program with great enthusiasm and eagerly participated in the star watching session using telescopes. Viewing the enthusiastic reception, the festival has received Vigyan Prasar in future aims to extend the scope of the event and take the festival onto a national platform. And now we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more science news. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back after the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. Honorable Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, on 30th December, announced the National Biotechnology Development Strategy 2015 to 2020 for the Department of Biotechnology. The strategy, recently approved by the government, has been formalized based on two years of consultation with over 300 stakeholders. The strategy involves significant investment in building the knowledge environment for niche research areas, the centers of excellence, innovation clusters, centralized R&D infrastructure and research tools. Emphasis would be on generation of biotech products, processes and technologies to enhance efficiency, productivity, safety and cost effectiveness of agriculture, food and nutritional security affordable health and wellness, environmental safety, clean energy and biofuel and biomanufacturing. Following Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit, Russia has announced that it will build at least six new nuclear power units in India in the next 20 years. According to reports, India will provide sites in Andhra Pradesh for setting up six nuclear reactors of 1200 megawatts each. Also extending the cooperation in defense technology along with nuclear power. India and Russia will collaborate on the development of advanced of Brahmos missile systems and Kamov 226 helicopters. Vigyan Prasar, in collaboration with National Council of Science Museums, is conducting a series of workshops on science films across the country. The workshop, open to students and budding professionals, focus on building capacity and promoting interest in the area of science and environment filmmaking. While the three-day workshop has already been conducted in Bhubaneswar and Bhopal, Vigyan Prasar plans to conduct the workshop in Calicut, Delhi and Guwahati in coming days. Taking a step towards battling pollution, a bicycle rally to create pollution awareness was organized in Jaipur on 27th December. The event focused on creating awareness about health, 
global warming and its ill effects and the importance of cycling was supported by organizations like Dana Bank and Maple Production. The rally saw enthusiastic participation of about 500 individuals across the city, including ex-army servicemen. was a year of many glorious scientific feats, many which contributed towards shaping our future and making the world a better place to live in. But as it is said, with great power comes great responsibilities. So as we take pride in these scientific achievements, it is also crucial to be aware of the challenges that await us in the new year. Join us in an introspection as to what are the scientific challenges that world is likely to face in 2016 in our next segment, In Focus. As another year of glorious scientific pursuits and achievements comes to an end, it is time to ask, what next? While the world in 2015 saw novel anti-TB molecules to the first vaccine for dengue, India's regional navigation system to solar impulse, close-up investigation of Pluto, discovery of pentaquarks and missing links in human evolution. We can anticipate much more in the year to come. Experts around the globe have identified many socio-economic challenges that await us in 2016 and needless to say, concerns surrounding environment, energy and healthcare top the chart. 2016 dawns with the warning of lingering El Nino. This, according to experts, might accelerate water shortage food crisis and emergence of new infections. While 2015 was the hottest year on record and the climate conference in Paris saw much deliberation on the cause of climate change, 2016 is predicted to be much worse unless the implementation of policies against climate change widely begin. This holds true for India as pollution levels have been recorded to be as high as ever in some of the Indian cities with the national capital Delhi ranking first. Primary challenges India will face including cutting down emissions and developing a mechanism for traffic control. Given the increasing human impact on environment, a working group convened by Leicester University professor Jan Zalasizix is likely to submit its recommendations about christening the present age as Anthropocene before the International Commission on Stratigraphy in 2016. In the field of healthcare, affordable healthcare and bringing down entries in drug prices is likely to be the crucial challenge of 2016. While nations like India will have to focus on curbing infectious diseases like TB, malaria and dengue. Focus is also needed in the area of child malnutrition, reproductive health and growing menace of substance abuse in the form of alcohol and tobacco. With increasing global population and rising energy demands, the world is looking towards renewable and alternate sources of energy. In the wake of rapidly dwindling fuel reserves, developing new technologies and materials to harness alternate sources like solar and wind energy is the need of the hour. With India's population rising to become larger than the population of all the developed countries combined, India will have to strive hard to gear up its nuclear energy capacity to meet the rising energy demands. The ever-increasing population also demands food security along with access to clean and safe drinking water. 
while the world shrinks into a global village with rapid digitalization data security also emerges as a threat in 2016 it is predicted that in 2016 cyber security will be an increasingly critical problem for companies governments and individuals apart from environment healthcare and energy Several scientific pursuits are likely to hit the headlines in 2016. This might include the Large Hadron Collider discovering new particles that might unravel the mysteries of the universe. While NASA's Juno spacecraft is scheduled to arrive at Jupiter in July 2016, looking for water on the planet. Two engineering marvels that might emerge in 2016 are the high-speed public transport system called the Hyperloop, which makes use of pressurized passenger capsules and the high-speed Bloodhound rocket system. We will also have to wait to see if 2016 will finally be the year in which physicists detect gravitational waves. Let us look forward to all this and much more in the year 2016. On to our next segment, Science You Can Use. While the world is looking towards solar and wind energy as alternatives to tackle the growing energy crisis, here comes a miracle in the shape of a tiny little gadget which can use evaporating water to generate power. Well, needless to say, the gadget can bring a new revolution in the power sector. Let us see how it works. We have seen solar energy. We have seen wind energy. Now how about energy from standing water in your swimming pool? Yes, the technology is here. A tiny device which can generate energy from evaporating water. It is a simple setup comprising rubber sheets coated with spores of common soil bacteria. The spores with the capacity to contract and relax based on the surrounding moisture create microscopic movements which can be converted into electricity. By expanding this technology, we might in a few years be able to generate energy from water evaporating from still reservoirs and even swimming pools. A brainchild of Professor Osgar Sahins from Columbia University, the technology could open up the possibility of new form of renewable energy much cheaper than solar and wind. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at viganprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today, but we'll be back with fresh new stories in science and technology again next week. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha TV. Bye-bye. <laughs>